Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Quest and Oculus Go video. And in this video, we're using a program called OneCast, uh, which is in beta at the moment, that allows you to stream your Xbox One straight to your headset. So it's an app that you can access within Oculus TV. And once you've got it installed, if you're on the same network as your Xbox, you can sort of dial into it, as it were, stream it to your headset. Where did that thing go? Oh, there it is. Um, and connect and play straight away. So there's kind of no sort of faffing around. Once you sideload it, it's kind of there for you to kind of do what you want with. So you, you do need to use SideQuest or something like that to, to sideload it to your headset. But once it's on, uh, you can do it. The, at the moment, the app is free. It's in beta. Um, and with the Oculus Quest and Go being an Android device, they've just released an Android version. Well, I say just. The, the bait has been out for a few weeks. Oh, I'm out of ammo again. Uh, let's find, try and find a gun on the floor. There's one over here. Let's grab that one. All right. um, and, and it's pretty good. It works really well. You can connect the controller straight to your headset. So if your Xbox is in a different room, you can still play it. It's no issues, no, fu no, uh, no fuss there. I'm not the best Halo player, but... Uh, We'll sort of continue with me failing at trying to shoot this guy here. Oh, there you go. He's, he's dying. Um, yes, yeah, so you can connect your controller. If you connect your controller to... You can keep the connect, controller connected to your Xbox um, if you if you prefer. But I find that I get a little bit of controller lag by doing that way. If you connect the controller to your headset using the Oculus app, it's definitely a lot better. and You get a lot more of a smoother... Uh, sort of experience and the latency is pretty good. You do get the occasional sort of like little bit of lag, little blip sort of thing, but for the most part, it looks pretty cool. It looks like a I don't know what a 720p game in nice high graphics. It doesn't look as nice as on my 4K TV, mine, but it looks pretty good. The frame rates really well. The stereo um, sound is there, so you do get, kind of get that surround sound. So if I kind of move around, I can hear things going off behind me and in front of me and all that sort of stuff. Oh, well, let's jump in this vehicle, shall we? And it works really well. It's really, really playable. There's no kind of no real kind of issues. If you do connect the controller to the headset directly, you do lose out on the rumble feature of the controller. So that's kind of a negative. But I think, you know, maybe sort of given that it's in beta, maybe we'll sort of get an update in the future. They'll add that, hopefully. Oh, we've got a tip tower here. Let's go back in again. I want to I wanna ride the back of this. Oh, a little bit of lag there. Um, can someone go and drive me? Oh, I've got a machine gun. Nice. Let's shoot these dog things. So, yeah, it's a shame that we lose the rumble feature, but, I mean, you know, that's only one part of the experience. As I say, hopefully we'll get that kind of in a future update, but this is dead simple to do. Once you've uh, sideloaded the OneCast app, which I'll leave a link to down below, all you do is uh, boot it up and then play it. And I'll, what I'll do now is we'll jump out and I'll show you the exact process on how to get this all set up and running. first thing you want to do from your Xbox itself, so I'm doing it inside the headset here, but do this kind of on your TV. Go to your Xbox, go to settings, so sort of press the Xbox button, bring up the settings, go to preferences, and then on the right hand side go to Xbox app connectivity, and make sure you have turned on allow connections from any device, um, and allow play to streaming and allow game streaming to other devices. What that does is it opens up your Xbox to your headset. If you can, for the best experience, make sure your Xbox is wired into your router. That will kind of give you the best kind of stable connection you possibly get. That's all you need to do with your Xbox. Once that's done, connect your Oculus Quest to your PC and boot up SideQuest. So your Xbox is all ready. All you now need to do is go to onecast.me slash android dash base. Beta. I'll leave a link to that down below. This will then give you the access to the beta version of the APK for OneCast. So in the middle here, you can see we've got version one, build five, grab the latest one. It's getting updated regularly. So click on that, download that to your desktop. That gives you the files. So we need to make sure our Oculus Quest or Oculus Go is connected via cable to our PC. So I've got a magnetic cable here. I'll leave a link to that down below as well if you want to. Um, and all we need to do is drag that APK file into SideQuest. If you've 
never used SideQuest before. I've got a video that I've done showing the entire setup process. It's super straightforward. Once you've done it, it's definitely the easiest way kind of maintaining side loaded apps. So if you don't know what that means, that means adding the games, apps and experiences that are not natively available on your VR headset. But because it's an Android device, we can kind of access the back end of it and side load, th load things in. So one of the things we're doing here is we're side loading an Android app, so you, what you get on an Android phone, onto our headset because the headsets themselves, the Go and the Quest, are Android devices at heart. So all we need to do is once you've set up SideQuest, so as I say, link down below to that if you want, uh, click on one of these sort of tabs on the side here, go into VR games, it doesn't really matter, and then grab your APK file. So here's the OneCast Beta 5, drag that in. You can see it takes a second, it then installs it into our headset. So at the bottom there, it says all okay, APK all installed. So once that's in, you can disconnect your headset from your PC and you should find it in your headset. Back on your headset, you need to go into Oculus TV to find OneCast. It is kind of hidden a little bit, but I'll show you what it's about. So if we go in here, you've got an option for SideQuest, which is a program you install when you first set up SideQuest on your headset, you install sort of a, a companion app onto your headset. And what that allows you to do is on the left-hand side here, we can scroll down to find ourselves one cast. So let's keep going down, 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 down. There we go. On the right hand side, yours might be left and might be right. <laughs> Click on one cast and it'll open up here. First time you boot this up, it'll ask you to log into your Xbox Live profile. So it knows that you're allowed to connect to your Xbox and your profile. So whichever account you're logged into on your Xbox at the moment in your house, you log into that and then you just click play. And then after just a couple of moments, it'll then boot up into the game. We can remove this bar at the bottom here just by pressing the Oculus button. And there you go, you can see we're back into this screen here. And just to note, the Xbox button when the controller is compared to your headset isn't doesn't work. So all you need to do is just click on the screen here, click on this little arrow, and click the little X, and that brings up the Xbox screen. So we can click it back to Halo 5 and carry on playing from where we were before. And there we go, we're back in playing. This driver is driving me around in circles. What's he trying to make me do? Do I need to get out and drive myself? Let's do that then, let's do that then. Let's drive myself. But yeah, it works really well. I've got no kind of real complaints with kind of how this controls. Uh, as I say, you do get the occasional sort of little bit of lag, a little bit of latency. All I would say is reboot your headset or reboot your router just so everything's nice and clean. Nice clean clean connections and all that sort of good stuff. Um, and you should be all right. Uh, but it plays really well, it's nice. Just kind of thing that you can kind of, in Oculus TV for example, you can kind of go play lying down, grab your Oculus controller, look at the ceiling, hold the Oculus home button, and now you can play on the ceiling. So you can be playing lying down while you're in bed, while you're doing whatever. Pretty cool. Or hold your Oculus button again, and we can get ourselves back down here again. So yeah. It works really well, there's no kind of massive issues, it's one of the sort of things that will get improved over time. Um, but yeah, I would definitely kind of recommend, as I say, connecting your controller to your headset, that helps with lag. Wired, wired connection for your head, for your Xbox even, um, so it's got the sort of strongest connection, and your um, headset itself will work entirely off Wi-Fi, and that's what's happening at the moment. I'm recording off Wi-Fi and recording to my PC, my headset, and it's a pretty smooth experience and uh, pretty impressed overall. It is me just going round and round in circles. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Have you found this video interesting, useful? Has it helped? Uh, is this something you're going to do much of playing your Xbox? Um, I think I am. It's definitely kind of my preferred method. As the, the graphics aren't as good when you're playing like this because you're getting about a 720p picture rather than sort of 4K like I'd get on my TV, but for kind of the convenience of this becoming a, what, a hundred inch screen or more, um, I can't really complain. Uh, it's no worse than sort of a, a projector screen. Uh, you get to use the nice kind of screens on your Quest or your Oculus Go. So this does work on the Go as well. Um, it's exactly the same process to set it all up. Uh, you just connect your Go to the side quest instead. Um, and I would say there was no kind of performance or visual difference. It all kind of worked the same. The same sort of latency and that sort of issue. But I'm not getting sort of much latency or stuff here. The occasional sort of pause. But I would say as long as you're not playing sort of competitively, 
and you're just playing a bit casually, then there's no issues at all using this method. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about it. So uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, that's fine. I'm big enough and ugly enough to take it. But do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it. I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the Remarkables, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified when I next upload a video. And that's me done, I'm out. Have a virtual high five.